the San Siro tonight, the first leg of the Champions League semi-final between Inter and Barcelona, who of course took Arsenal apart uh, so comprehensively at the quarter-final stage. And Inter on their CV this year, Chelsea, of course. Looks like we're all set. Let's join our match commentators Andy Gray and Rob Hawthorne. So, how do you solve a problem like young Messi? How do you catch a cloud and pin it down? Not even a volcanic cloud could keep Messi and Barcelona away from Milan, although it took a 14-hour coach journey with a stop-off in Cannes to get them here. But at least amidst the European-wide travel disruption, it is just a relief, Andy, that we do have a fixture like this tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it would have been a nightmare uh, logistically if CSKA had beaten uh, Inter had got through. I wonder what Barcelona would have done there and what UEFA would have done there, Rob. But it hasn't happened. They've had a very luxurious coach, I'm sure, bring them all the way. A lovely stop over in Cannes overnight. Arrived yesterday fairly comfortably. Had a training session yesterday afternoon. So I, I, I don't think that'll be a factor in how the game's going to go tonight. They were in Cannes about a month before the uh, film festival. Tonight it is the clash of the Titans. The first leg of the bid to reach the final in Madrid. Will it be Barcelona, Barcelona going to the home of their great rivals? Or will it be Jose Mourinho going back to the new camp? Plenty in centre for both here. Yeah? Plenty in centre. And plenty of subplots as well in this fixture tonight. Samuel Eto facing his former club among them. Barcelona in their dazzling strip to go with their dazzling football that was very much in evidence against Arsenal. Can they possibly reproduce that again? contingent in the Inter lineup and Massimo Moratti hoping that Inter can win their first European Cup since 1965. Well, with an extra day's recovery and having not had to endure the travel chaos of their opponents, Inter named the same team that beat Juventus on Friday. Samuel Eto and Thiago Motta line up against their former club in a team that also includes three players who plied their trade at Real Madrid. Among them, Walter Samuel, one of four Argentinians, hopefully for Inter, with inside information on their international teammate Lionel Messi. A fellow Portuguese of Jose Mourinho in charge, Oligario Bencarenza. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who traded places with Samuel Eto in the summer, is fit to face his former side. It's his first start in scoring twice at Arsenal in the last round. Another familiar face to the natives is Maxwell, who retains his place at left-back, even though Eric Abidal is back in the squad. Carlos Puyol, sent off at the Emirates, returns from one suspension, one booking away from another. Dani Alves saw red in the draw at Espanyol at the weekend. Well, all the talking done. Jose can do no more. Plans laid out. Big night for him, obviously, and Ibrahimovic going in against uh, their old clubs. Pep Guardiola. Long journey, plenty to think about. I just can't wait. This could be something special. Don't expect, I don't think, anything like Arsenal against Barcelona. A very open game. I think Inter will be very keen to keep this very, very tight as long as possible. So who does have the most influence? The magician on the field? or the master of it. It's very much team ethic against the individual, 
technique against tactics. Samuel Eto, who scored Barcelona's first goal in last season's final on opposite sides tonight to the man who scored their second, Lionel Messi. And Walter Samuel has given away a free kick there for a challenge on Ibrahimovic. I don't think he can argue with that. A big bonus that Ibrahimovic playing, I think. This will be interesting to see if they let or how far they let Barcelona come. I just think they'll try and restrict space between the back four and Cambiasso and Mota in there. Ball in towards Ibrahimovic who uh, stuck out a, a hopeful leg. Of course, they really pummeled Arsenal from the uh, opening of the away leg in the last game, but you would expect Inter to be more compact. I don't understand why he doesn't head that. I have to say. I know he wants to do everything with his feet, but what on earth is he doing? Why don't he just throw himself at that and head a ball in the net? In the first couple of minutes of the match, your team's won up. I, I really don't get that, flicking a leg at that. It's a brilliant ball in. Well, he had a good scoring record at uh, Inter Ibrahimovic, 66 goals in 117 games. Started very slowly at Barcelona. Here's Carlos Puyol and Gerard Piquet, the central defensive partnership reunited after their suspensions for the match against Arsenal, not that they missed them, missed them much. Well, just looking quickly into when we saw the team graphic there, it did have Eto and Diego Melito up front, but as you can see from the, the start of the game, they've actually gone with the same system, I think, where they played at Stamford Bridge, with Goran Pandev playing wide on the left, Melito in the centre, and then you see Samuel Eto playing from the right, and then Schneider's just supporting them from the middle. Cambiasso and Mota just holding. So it's exactly from the start of this. Looks like the same system that they went in against Chelsea with. There's Lionel Messi. The more that they can start him of service, the better. And Cambiasso immediately restricting the room he had in which to operate. And Cambiasso has now found Diego Melito, who's got Eto in the box. Schneider waiting at the edge. Pandev's in the middle too. Cleared in the end by Keita. Good play from Diego Melita there. Lifted the crowd immediately. Cambiasso doing his bit, Robin. Little Messi. Set Melito away. Well, Cambiasso is one of those who's been on an international roster with uh, Lionel Messi. Four Argentinians in the inter lineup, and that may help. Knowing about him is one thing, stopping him quite another. Here's Dani Alves. He's been given away by Goran Pandev. Notebook out already. Just a little anxious to get to the ball there, Pandev. Alves wasn't really going anywhere. Couple of the big boys, both centre backs have gone up. And you see them I'm going to join Ibrahimovic and Keita in there. Just the four. A bit overcommitted in there. Left to Chavi to try and unlock this into defence. Looked for Pedro, came back off for Lucio and Julio Cesar. Thought he prevented the corner, but the officials thought otherwise. Well, it must have been close. It's the third time the teams have played each other in the Champions League this season. The group phase game here finished nil-nil. Barcelona won two-nil in the return at the new Camp. Xavi pulling the corner back. Pedro's ball in. happy with the challenge here the referee but you can see already from Barcelona statement of intent in the opening five minutes or so that they're going to take the game if they can and if they're allowed to to enter whenever possible I think they do fancy getting an away goal Here's Eto. Oh. 
and it. Almost half a chance here. For a better ball from Pandev. Here's Keita. Ibrahimovic coming to uh, reach it and finding Xavi. Ball made wide by Pedro to Dani Alves. Now Messi. Weaving his way through. Was he caught on the edge of the area? No. No free kick given against Cambiasso. No real argument from anyone in Barcelona shot. The only thing you would look at that is did Cambiasso just put the leg out and invite Messi to go over it? If he did, then certainly Messi took that invite. Here's Keita having a go. Here's this example here, just tucks inside here. Uh, he's very well, very much looking for that, you know, Messi. Not pretty. Even brilliant players go looking for penalties, it seems. He's a player who uh, generally doesn't overreact after uh, challenges. No, he, that's uh, fair. He bounced up, didn't he, after the uh, free kick that he was awarded in the uh, El Clasico match and ended up scoring a goal from the resulting free kick. I mean, when you talk about experience, well, with all the outfield players playing, you know, Barca have five outfield players, 26 or under. Inter have one under 26, Wesley Snyder's. So this is an Inter side that's absolutely packed with experienced footballers. This is Samuel, who had experience of La Liga, not too happily in his time with uh, Real Madrid, and Jose Mourinho hoping that that will be turned to his advantage, and against Pep Guardiola, who was uh, given the Barcelona job when they might have considered Mourinho, who had that spell when he was rather sneeringly referred to as the translator under... First Bobby Watson, then Louis Van Gaal. Well, he's busy. Here's Chavi, very much the orchestrator of this Barcelona side. Now Alves. Pedro. Alves again, who has been used further forward in some recent games by Barcelona. We saw their lead at the top cut to a point at the weekend after only drawing in the derby with Espanyol. Helped on then by Sedu Keita, but too much on it for Ibrahimovic. Well, I think we're seeing that Inter will be quite happy to absorb some pressure to allow Barca a lot of the ball. But confident in the knowledge that defensively they're very strong. And they'll think that with the pace of Melito and Eto in particular that they can counter quite quickly and quite well. Cambiasso's header. And from Thiago Motta. To Valdez, who's uh, unfortunate really, and he's uh, vying with some very strong competition to win his first cap for Spain when he's got Ike Casillas and Pepe Reina ahead of him. Yeah, you feel for Pepe Reina as well, don't you? Indeed. <laughs> Here's Pique. Ibrahimovic. It's Pedro. There's still an invitation to move forward, but it was shut off pretty quickly. Eto looks offside. Looks offside. He actually might have gone wide. Diego Melitos saying no. A little bit of frustration. He lost the ball easy. This is very close. Look at that. In actual fact, when the ball was played, he wasn't. But when players cross like that, defender goes out, forward goes through. It always looks worse. PK was the uh, defender who thought he'd stepped up in time. The replay suggesting otherwise. Now Alves 
His uh, involvement at the weekend ended early with a, a red card. Has a, what appears to be a wrist problem. He goes down, don't really get stood on, does he? Yeah. You see he's getting jumped up, jumping over him there. Just the boot came down on, looks like the fingers. Painful. There's a Mourinho's side, no longer rule in uh, Italy as things stand. They've suffered as a result of a costly draw at Fiorentina. Roma now lead the table. I do like these close-up fancy ones that you see him. Just the heel of the boot landing on the and of Dani Alves. I would be very surprised if that forced them off the field. Dani Melito is on the bench, could end up uh, lining up against his brother Diego Melito, and if he did, would you believe it would be the first time in the history of the European Cup that brothers have lined up on opposite sides? Here's Seydou Keita under pressure here from oh, that's not Samuel a Eto'o. No, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Eto's so disappointed he's just whacked the ball away there in disappointment i think he hounds Cater really well now he's going to get booked for his disappointment oh, i can understand that i think this is soft Cater thinks he's got that and then he comes in and just talks the ball away and kate has got a problem that's got him a booking Linesman flagging may have influenced the referee, and he had the best view of it. Oh, certainly, Linesman gave it, that's for sure. Looking at insult to injury for uh, Samuel Eto. Fortunately for Inter, he is not one of those who's a yellow card away from missing the second leg, although three of the back four are Samuel, one of them. PK. Javier Zanetti, now Puyol, PK. Schneider just trying to uh, hound them. Stayed in for Pedro. Zanetti, now Goran Pande. Caught by Dani Alves, who's uh, still feeling the pain of that wrist problem. Yeah, they do make it hard though. I had a good Johnson touched on it there, the ability of them and the willingness to win the ball back quickly. Barca, they really do put teams under pressure, you see that. Ibrahimovic goes to the ball and well another one will be coming. Even Xavi looking at that, leaving the midfield to go and press the centre back high up the pitch. They really are top top at that. I mean we always admire the skill and the ability when they have the football in their possession, but what they do when they don't have the football. Is admirable as well. As he just tried to pick out a pass then to uh, Ibrahimovic. It is the thing that's impressed about Barcelona, particularly in the knockout phase of this Champions League, the fact that their great technical ability is allied to a great work rate. And Mourinho will be hoping his side can cope with that. I've often wondered why hard work should be regarded as an extra when you play football. Handball there. Yep. Given against Pedro, one of the uh, young talents that Barcelona have certainly not been afraid to promote. Now Melito. Back to him from Pandev. This is Zanetti. Now Thiago Motta. Pep Guardiola, who had a couple of years playing in Italy with uh, Brescia and with Roma, briefly under Fabio Capello. Although most of his playing career, of course, was spent very successfully with the club he now coaches. Dani Alves. Now Thiago Motta. Foul on Pandev by Pedro. Well, all Mourinho's teams throughout the years have always been very good. 
and making the most of things like this and giving the referee a problem. From his Porto days all the way through. And he was the one who, when he was Chelsea coach, drew attention to uh, what he felt was play acting by Lionel Messi on the occasion <laughs> when Asier Del Horno was sent off. Was a little bit that night, mind you. I remember <laughs> the incident. Much to do about nothing. That's a uh, victory for Barcelona at Stamford Bridge. The last time that uh, Jose Mourinho suffered a home defeat as Chelsea manager. He's only suffered one home defeat as Inter boss, and that was in the Champions League last season against Panathinaikos. Really does bring out the old adage of making your home your fortress. Here's Thiago Motta. And oh, what are we? Just over 15 minutes in. And how have Inter done? Okay, defensively solid. Apart from that scare right in the first couple of minutes when I do think Ibrahimovic should have made more of the cross into the box for him. Apart from that, they've kept it pretty tight. They've been solid, difficult to break down. On the other hand, they've been. They've had very little going forward. They've had real trouble when they've had possession of the ball and the pressure that they're under creating anything. But I don't think he'll mind that. I think Mourinho wants to be in this game right up to the last half hour of his second leg. That's Cambiasso. Samuel Eto lining up to place one. It's come back off the goalkeeper. Melito's there! And he could make nothing of it from the angle, but that's the clearest sight of goal that Inter have had so far. Well, I have to say, it didn't look the most powerful of shots from Samueletto. Looked like Victor Valdez made a bit of a meal of that. Pulled across this time by Eto. Inter will be encouraged by that. They got change out of the goalkeeper then that they maybe weren't expecting. Samuel Cambiasso. Here's Eto, looking to play in Melito, Pandev's on the far side. Away though by Dani Alves. <laughs> Just as I was saying, that they've struggled to create much. This is the best bell and you can hear that by the noise that's coming from this crowd. Here's PK. Okay, looking to stretch into, but Michael's there. Well, Barcelona haven't let in a goal in the three matches they've played since Nicholas Bentner shot them at the new camp this month. Well, I'm not sure what Samuel, Samuel and Lucio were doing there. Really sloppy piece of defending at the back there. Here's Messi. Now Maxwell. Just got the edge on Cambiasso as he run it too far. He's pulled it back. And it's in! And Barcelona get the breakthrough through Pedro. Just after they'd had a scare on one end. It's Pedro who converts at the other. Well, that all started by that sloppy piece of defending with the ball at the back with Lucio and Ma and Samuel. And they never quite got themselves together from then. But I don't know what Maicon's doing here. Look at him, look at the right back. I have no idea. He steps out trying to have a look at Keita and he doesn't go and cover the run of Maxwell. Allows him just to wander freely into the area from, from here. He picks out a really good ball. Any ball that's played back to that sort of area from the byline has got danger written all over it. And it's a lovely controlled finish. Really was a lovely finish. It's a 20th goal of the season for Pedro Tw Rodriguez. 20. <laughs> and he scored, would you believe, in six different competitions this season. A player who uh, hadn't scored a senior goal before this campaign. Well, for a team that's normally so very good defensively, that was just a catalogue of errors. Well, a rethink now, perhaps, for Inter. 
who would have come into this game hoping to be compact enough to absorb everything that Barcelona could throw at them. But a moment in which they've switched off and let Maxwell the fullback through has cost them dear. Pedro coming at them again. Here's Ibrahimovic. Well, it's just mentally how they cope with it. I talked about the experience they have in this team, and they have it. But nil-nil here, the quarter and the group stages. Two-nil defeat in the new camp. Now one down. Just wonder how they feel. It was Pedro who got the second goal in that uh, victory in the new camp when Barcelona were two up in the first half an hour. Now Inter have to respond. It's a foul by Dani Alves. They're going to have to do something they haven't done before in four previous attempts. Score against Barcelona in the Champions League. The emphasis switches from defence to attack, and Schneider bends that one in, free header! What an opportunity for Lucio! Well, how's he suspended? I just know if he's offside. I think the flag's on up here. I think if he had a score, the flag's up. He's offside. Certainly ahead of play, but what an awful header from the centre-half. <laughs> it really was, technically, really, really poor. There's no doubt Melito's chance, what, two or three minutes? Two minutes probably before Barca's goal was a genuine opportunity. Again, from a, from a guy who's got over 20 goals in total this season, you would have expected a better finish from Melito. And Barca have made them pay for that. But they've contributed. As I say, that's very un-Italian like defending. Try it again. Melito, the player this time, who's straight into that territory. I don't expect Mourinho to panic, and I don't expect his players to. There's over an hour of this game to go, plus 90 minutes. As I've said, as long as they're still in the game, that's going to be the most important thing. Well, his team had put together three consecutive clean sheets in the Champions League before that goal from Pedro, who's looking to get in again here. And Sonetti keeping charge. Here's Pandev. Lovely running, lovely ball, that. Pedro's run, Ibrahimovic's pass. Sonetti just about dealt with it. Ball given there against Wesley Schneiders. Here's Samuel. Now Chabby. Off Messi to Maxwell. Xavi. Here's PK. Messi. Cambiasso tried to break it up. Mikon coming in to help out. Eto. Through to Mikon, but he was offside. Well, it's the highest up the pitch we've seen Mikon. I know he's great going forward, but I still, uh, I'm at a loss to understand where he was going. When Maxwell was making the run down the left, he just disappeared in field, attracted to someone else in an area where he shouldn't have done. He should have been out there closing Maxwell down. Really poor defender for someone as experienced as him. Here goes Messi. This year thought he'd stopped him, Samuel did, but Messi keeps on hunting for it. PK. It's there to be reached by Wesley Schneider, and he did reach it. Cambiasso looking to pick out Samuel Eto. And 
Here's Chabi. This is Ibrahimovic. The ball to Alves, who's uh, behind the queue in the uh, Brazil team to uh, Maicon. Header away by Pande. Here's Keita. Cambiasso. Now Michael. Over hit for Melito. Just fractional. That was a much better run from Diego Melito. Looked like he kept himself on side there. Just a fraction over hit from Michael in the pass. Michael who scored a, a cracking goal in Inter's uh, last game. Juggled with it before pulling it in against yeah, he uh, Juventus. He may have to do a little bit more and uh, on this left hand side. Just start to work Sedo Keita. Messi's not really played left side. Normally they stretch the three across the front line. You know, Pedro Messi and uh, Ibrahimovic. But Messi's tucked in field for the majority of the game. And, well, you see Sedo Keita at the bottom of your screen. They're asking him to cover in, in two out. And they on to Melito! Another opportunity from the angle that goes begging for Diego Melito. Well, you can't keep missing these and expect to beat Barcelona. A lovely little ball. Flag stayed down this time. Lovely little weighted ball from Schneiders. He just wants to bend it past Victor Valdez, but gets no bend on it. That's two pretty good chances Diego Melito's had. One to the left, one to the right. Neither have hit the target. Precious opportunities that the uh, Argentinian has spurned on a night when uh, Inter cannot really afford to squander such chances. Here's Ibrahimovic. Xavi. Now Carlos Puyol. Chavi, Busquets, Ibrahimovic trying to help it on, but here's Javier Zanetti. Does that possession ring a bell? Highbury a few weeks ago? <laughs> or even the Emirates. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Emirates a few weeks ago, total domination, and Arsenal were criticised for not having that, but here we have Inter Milan at home, on their own patch. Exactly with the same sort of problem. Michael. It's Cambiasso. Schneider. Here's Zanetti. There's a fair bit of it to Pedro, but he's won a, a free kick out of him. Enters the longest serving player by some distance. He's nearly as old as Guardiola, isn't he? He is. There's a three years between them. That's right. So that's 36 years of age now. It's Eto. Now Mike on. Eto pulled it across a little behind Melito, but he took it on board anyway. Chance! Goal! Schneider equalizes! Well, from a really poor cross as well. Samueletto really makes a mess of the cross, scuffs it. But they go missing at the back. Dani Alves tucks right round. Really in field, comes way, way in. Leaves Wesley Snyders. It's attracted in there with Pandev, and Snyders just stays out the way. Just holds his position. And a lovely little layoff from Diego Melito, didn't panic. And to have the equaliser. Well, I thought this might be tight. Not much happening, not many goals. We might all be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you 
do tend to find these uh, first leg matches now a lot less uh, tentative than they used to be. The importance of the away goal has been recognised. Barcelona looking for another here. Alves cross though, cut out by Samuel. Good response though from Inter who might already have had their goal had Melito been able to take his chance even before Schneider did take his. Well, I think apart from a really poor piece of defending, involved two or three players, combination have all led to the Barcelona goal. I think Inter will feel they've done all right. And they will be very pleased that they've got back in this game as quickly as they have. Header on by Goran Pandev. Nolito looking to return it to him. It's away by Puyol, and their tails are up now, the home side. Yeah, that might be a free kick, trying to nick the ball there. I think it was foot up. Bush gets there, Real Bush gets there. He's guilty of it. Wesley Schneider, the former Real Madrid man against Barcelona. A call to his credit, and now can he harm them further from this free kick? Schneider looks to direct it in. Punched away by Valdez. He's got enough distance on it. But the Valdez looked a comfortable one to catch if he wanted to, but goalkeepers don't like doing that. Melito has worked to win another throw in. Michael will take. Melito. Cambiasso. Get the panda this time. Quite an ambitious pass that. Schneider putting the pressure on. And it should come again now. I uh, see that's the problem. When one does it, looks great. But then if no one else is following, put pressure under. Uh, it's just all for nothing, really. Here's Keita. Now Pedro, whose goal has been wiped out, using the support of the advancing Alves. Poor initial touch. He tried to rescue. Well, he's getting forward as we'd expect, Danny Alves, and Pandev's having trouble tracking him. The Inter have responded really well. I've been very impressed. The way they've got themselves back into this game as quickly as they have. Well, this is Barcelona's fourth semi-final in five years, and over the two legs there hasn't been more than two goals in any of the others. But here we are at uh, one all with just over half an hour gone of the first leg here. Pandev getting away from Busquets and Alves. Wesley Schneider returning into Pandev. Melito was uh, looking for the early release but was frustrated by Danny Alves. That was the right idea from Pandev. He just thought he'd got himself half a yard. He knew Melito was waiting. Got a little piece there of skill. Oh, Marcel Alves, he gets back in. Here's a goal again. He just gets drawn in with Pandev, Danny Alves. You can see that there. And it leaves Schneider's wide open. And full match to Diego Alito, very much aware and played him a pass that he didn't have to control it. He could just focus on one thing, and that was a finish. I don't want to see this for Inter's sake, but he's been quiet. A very dangerous thing to say. <laughs> Here's Alves. Pedro. And Ibrahimovic was there. It was brave goalkeeping by Junior Cesar coming and claiming it at the striker's feet. Well, he's only claiming at his feet because Ibrahimovic again wants to put his foot up to it. A frustrating player, can't he, at times, Ibrahimovic? Yeah, I don't think that would be a fair assessment. <laughs> Uh, all in with the uh, Eto deal as well. He's regarded as the uh, second most 
expensive transfer after Cristiano Ronaldo, valued at uh, just under £60 million. Pounds. Well, there again, that's another sloppy piece of play. I'm not surprised Mourinho's up there. There you go there again. You know, I can think of a lot of people who might just have been throwing themselves at that in a game such as this, Champions League semi-final. Hmm. Might be worth getting a little knock to pick up a goal. At least you're there, that poor piece of defending there, just giving the ball away, playing it out for a throw. Real put himself out of a problem there with Eto, set Maxwell away. Ibrahimovic. Here's Pedro. Ibrahimovic, there's a little push on Lucio that the referee spotted. Yeah, just a little bit. He doesn't think so. Unsurprisingly. started in the previous five after scoring twice at Arsenal Ibrahimovic because of a fine injury which he picked up in the warm-up of the next league match get a 10-minute run out of the weekend against Espanyol here's Mike on picked up off Keita that away by PK that's that job I was talking about that Sedu Keita does for them Biasso. Here's Michael. Pressure was from Bessie. The mistake was by Esteban Cambiasso. Fifteen games unbeaten now for Barcelona since their only league defeat of the season at Atletico Madrid in February, but. Jose Mourinho's team have a, an enviable home record. Loose touch by Xavi, did well to get out of that against Javier Zanetti. Here's Busquets. Now Pedro. Messi Good to take on Samuel who's trying to force him away from danger and does Alves Messi again Eto gets to him this time and Messi will keep bouncing up for more and getting involved let's take an extra roll or two this time well, he just got caught as he was falling. Cambiasso just leg banged into his head. Look, there's any intent from that. That was a nasty one. Just couldn't keep his footing there, and then just gets caught there. You can see that as he falls into Cambiasso. And it's another one of those periods with Barcelona dominating the ball. 30, 40 yards from goal. Here's Xavi. Here's Alves. Lucio, who clears for now. Just great football. Keep it, keep it, keep it, and then little Xavi, as usual. He's always the one to find the pass, nine times out of ten. Might have done better with that, Danny Alves. Here's Keita. Xavi again. Picks out the ball to Messi this time. Messi forced to turn away, finds Alves. Can he do better this time? Can he find a killer ball? Away by Lucio. Maxwell's header. Near to Melito. Oh, he wasn't offside either. He wasn't offside. If Melito could just have cleared the defender, I think it was Wesley Schneiders. Here's PK. Xavi. 
And Mourinho want to get to half time at no worse than 1 1. That's for sure. And this pressure's mounting now as we, in the last five minutes in this first half. Problem for uh, Lucio at the heart of the inter defence. Whether that was one of those acrobatic clearances he tried and he's just landed on that left shoulder. And a couple of times he had to deal with balls flung in there by Alves. Mm. Oh, what a ball. <laughs> just bent away from back Gordon Pandit. And Danny Alves has made a mess of it. That just shows you sometimes you can play all the pretty patterns you want in the game. But that's a ball that must have ended up going 70, 80 yards. And now because of that little bit of control and miscontrol, into another corner. Extraordinary. A direct route can be the effective route. It's earned uh, into this corner, which Wesley Schneider will take. Again, Valdez opting to punch rather than take hold of. Icon hoping to benefit from the bounce. Got a push from Seydou Keita, who's won a free kick, which Candiasso wants to take quickly. Well, I'm with Barca there, and I think Maicon mistimes his jump totally. He's up and down again before the ball's even dropping. Watch him, he's up, and then he's down, and the ball's now bounced on his head. <laughs> ah, that's such a cheap free kick the referee's given. No wonder every Barca player is upset with it. Generous decision it may be, but Wesley Schneider scored with one in the last round against uh, CSKA Moscow. Can't imagine the Barcelona defending will be as generous as the wall was on that particular night. No, and this must be right in his limit, mind you. 34 metres, getting close to 40 yards of old money. Two and a half minutes from half-time. Is Valdez going to have work to do here from this free kick? Schneider hits it. And deflected behind for the corner. Oh, struck well enough. Wall did its job. No, oh, actually, it wasn't the wall. So I'm guessing might well have been going wide. So they'll take the corner. Schneider who takes it, cleared by Chappie. Pretty good half for both sides, I think, so far. Inter have had to concede a lot of possession. We knew they would. But they've created three very good chances. And amongst all that, certainly more, more good chances than Barca have created. And Barca made the most of very poor defending. So I think that both will be pleased. Barca that they've got their away goal and Inter that they're back in it. They have the uh, first boost Barcelona, but I wonder if there is a stage in the second half where their travel weariness might uh, catch up with them. No, I'm not having that. <laughs> they haven't run there, bro. <laughs> they didn't have to walk. <laughs> they were in some luxury, even though it was a coach. <laughs> Cloud comes down that far, they may have to walk for the second leg. <laughs> Here's Puyol. Now Maxwell. Pedro. Here's Busquets. Now Keita. Another little session of one of these long passing sequences that Barcelona put together at the edge, 20, 30 yards from goal. And then eventually, just usually from this man, as a pass comes into his head, his vision, and they're away. 
Alves. Now Messi. Samuel who stopped him. from Busquets, which risked the yellow card, uh, and sure enough, gets Doesn't one. risk it, he's getting it. Wow, well, he's booked Eto'o for kicking it away earlier than Busquets knows he's, he's going to get booked for that. A little short petulance. That's when his team have got the free kick. The tossing up procedure, the sort of uh, stupidity that can cost you a place in the final. Here's Maxwell. Away by Javier Zanetti. And there goes the half-time whistle, a half in which Barcelona had the boost of the early goal through Pedro, but Inter, who'd spurned a couple of chances from Melito, did get their equaliser, and it came from Wesley Schneider. Inter one, Barcelona one. Eidegger right, Johnson, who won this competition with Barcelona last year, Graham Suness and Gary McAllister, our guests. Interesting, one apiece in the San Siro. Barca in front, but Inter have responded well. He's been back and ready for some time, Jose Mourinho. Um, we are, all of us, the rest of us, ready to go as well. One apiece it is in the San Siro, Andy Gray and Rob Hawthorne. Well, a captivating first half, but we're still uh, no closer to knowing who'll get the advantage in the first leg, so very much all to play for in the second half, Andy. Yeah, absolutely. I just think that uh, Pep Guardiola will think, OK, if it stays like this, 1-1, brilliant, we'll take that to the new camp and expect to win it. I think that Diego Melito and his mates will realise that they'd like to go with a lead now. I think 0-0 is different. I think if it was still 0-0, I don't think it would concern Inter too much. They would probably take that wrong. But I think the fact that Barcelona have that away goal, I think the players know that they could do with another one. Same sort of score they took to Stamford Bridge would do them now. Well, amazingly, for all their uh, rich history, this is only into second appearance in the semi-finals of the Champions League since the uh, format was introduced, and the last time they did go out on away goals, even though both legs were played here because uh, it was against AC Milan, of course, <laughs> yes. in 2003. He's referee making sure that uh, everyone is back out and now Pep Guardiola is as well. He actually just got out without the ball, the ref, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a good help, referee. Get the ball, then we can get started. But yet again, even though Messi's been quiet, and I think it'd be fair to say he has been, that little man we just saw in the picture, Xavi, he still is, he's the, well, he's the conductor. He's the quarterback. Just about everything goes through him. Did feel that uh, with Messi's reputation, Jose Mourinho had to uh, somehow find his own formula of volcanic ash to uh, keep him under control. But uh, Xavi has been pulling the strings as usual. It is the uh, usual cosmopolitan lineup from uh, Inter. No Icelanders in it, but uh, no Italians either. Not that that's anything new. Here's Wesley Schneider, Samuel Eto'o. Schneider, the inter goal scorer. Melito's got Pandev in the middle if he can find him, but it's just in front of him. That could have been a rip roaring start to the second half of the home side. Well, that's unlucky. Right from the little back heel from Wesley Schneider's. This was a fantastic little build up, probably their best of the evening. And they're so unlucky that Pandev's just two strides away from that. He had a little look, Diego Melito. He saw he was there. He just couldn't get the pass square enough across the six yard box. A warning already to Barcelona, who had the breakthrough of that goal from Pedro, but the warning signs had been there before Schneider did manage to produce the equaliser. Really, the uh, the sloppy defending that led to the Barcelona goal will be Inter's main regret of that first half. Samuel. This is Lucio, who's the only one of the back four who isn't a yellow card away from missing the second leg. Just 
Julio Cesar, the uh, Brazilian goalkeeper, who's had a couple of questions asked of him in uh, recent matches. Errors gave away vital goals to Daniel De Rossi of Roma and to Perth Kroldrup. Miles off. Miles off. Against Melito. Yeah. He just went a little too early, a little too anxious. He didn't have to. I mean, the gap was there. They were high. Look how high up the pitch they are again. Poyo got it just right. Here's Messi. Thiago Motta winning the tackle against him. And even though Messi stands and stares, the referee not convinced by his appeals. Go wide. Pandev reaches Diego Melito. Eto's in the box. Melito to Maicon! Goal to Inter! And the fullback who was caught out of position for the Barcelona goal makes amends in the grand manner. And Inter, who were hit hard, hit back harder. Well, they pitched the ball off of Lionel Messi, of all people. I think Barca were looking for a free kick way down the pitch. But when he didn't get it, I have to say, Inter have sprung brilliantly again. They almost scored moments ago, but this is just the end of it. And full, full marks to Maicon. No wonder this fullback scores as many goals. He gets himself in positions. And even when it's awkward, and it is awkward, because it came at him awkwardly, he had pressure from a Barca defender. But he was still good enough to control it and just nick it past Victor Valdez. It's just about the perfect start for Jose Mourinho and his interside at the start of the second half. A second goal in as many games for the fullback Mykon, but a first in the Champions League for 18 months. And what a position that now puts Inter in. They've deserved it for the way they started the second half, very much pegging Barcelona back. the onus is on the defending champions in this competition to do something about it no, he's not catching that. well I think what we should remember is that this is a two-legged semi-final and Barcelona are away from home so Pep Guardiola does not have to chase this game he does not have to take risks right now they are one goal down they are 1-0 win and the, Bell and the new camp away from going to the final at the moment. So he doesn't need to chase it, Rob. Second leg is uh, just eight days away. So it is a situation that will be resolved in just over a week. I'm just looking at Marco Matarazzi there warming up, just wondering if we've got a problem. Lucio had a little knock in the first half. He was holding that shoulder. Started the second, so we're assuming we're OK. We'll keep an eye on that. Escape from Pedro, Cambiasso wins it for Inter, on by Pande. And that, that was Melito impeded, kick. he was. That might be a free kick. I'll tell you what, that was a they, they really do risk it. Said that against Arsenal, Arsenal caught them out two or three times, so high up the pitch. And they do take a chance when they play like that. And at the moment, Wesley Snyders is just enjoying one of those little patches. When he's getting into space and Inter have got the ball. Therefore, Schneider can influence the play. Well, a card here, and it rules Carlos Puyol out of the second leg. He's just back from a Champions League suspension, and he's got another now. Well, they've got plenty of cover in that area. I don't think that'll be something for him to watch this. Melito tries to make the run, and was making the running. Puyol's just blocked him off quite deliberately, right under the nose of the referee. Deserve the booking. There's PK. Someone doing to Barca what Barca do to others. There you go. Pressure high up the pitch. See, sometimes great players, if you stand off them, can look great players. When you put them under pressure, even they have a little bit of a problem. Well, no doubt the Inter players were reminded of those responsibilities at half time by Mr. Mourinho. I just think there's so, so much left in this tie. It really is. Two of the biggest names in European football here, locking horns. Barca, who have been here before, looking to try and be the first team to defend the Champions League in this format. Inter, as you say, has been such a long, long time. 
since they've known what it's like to contest a major final like this. Desperate to get there. Here's Michael, the man who has given into the edge. Melito. PK, solid as ever. He's earned the nickname Pickenbauer for his uh, recent performances. Gerard Piquet has been a, <laughs> a very steady influence in that Barcelona defence. Maxwell, now Xavi. Busquets. Here's Lionel Messi, danger signs here for Inter, it's swerved, and Julio Cesar did well to deal with that. Well, I know it's not easy, but you know where he's going. He's going in on his left foot. I mean, you've just got to over-exaggerate the cover to try and nullify him a bit, but you can see how much that ball moved. And I think the goalkeeper's made a really good save in the end there. Could turn out to be a really crucial save in this first leg, and maybe in the context of the tie, particularly if Inter can get another goal. Here's Pedro. Busquets, Cater on first time, Ibrahimovic looking to get in, but Maicon played it against him. Now that's a free kick, no doubt about that, but he let it go on. Just to see if there would be any advantage at the end of the move. They've got the corner, so instead of bringing it back for a free kick, he's just letting the corner be taken. Oh, good save again from Julio Cesar. Twice now the goalkeeper's reactions have been tested, and twice he's been up to the job. Well, you've got to score there. You've got to score. That's an unbelievably big chance. Was it Bush gets, I think, who went diving in there. What is he, six yards? Absolutely free. Drop back to the goalkeeper. Don't take anything away from Julio Cesar there. He's made the stop, but from that distance, Bush gets shouldn't have been allowing him to make a stop. And yeah, Stankovic is uh, poised to come on here for Jose Mourinho's side. I think we've got what he's supposed to go and do. <laughs> that was fairly graphic from the Inter coach. I don't, think was quite, I don't think it was quite saying go punch a few while you're <laughs> out there, but I think get close, break up the play. And it's uh, pressure that has helped to nullify Barcelona at the start of the second half, but there was a warning sign from there. Header there from uh, Bush gets that Barcelona are by no means out of this game yet. Here's Melito, Puyol trying to isolate him on that side. I think he's done really well, Diego Melito. I know he's had a couple of chances that he didn't make the most of, Rob, but I think he's run the line very, very well. He's been mobile, he's quite quick. He's given PK and Puyol problems all night long. Here's Messi, he hasn't given into enough problems for Barcelona's liking. That one taken away from him by Javier Zanetti. Well, he might have fancied that. I don't think there's at any time tonight as he got a 1v1 with the last defender, pretty much, and Zanetti was that. Pandev, the player being sacrificed to allow Stankovic to come on. Stankovic, the uh, Serbian captain, who's appearing in his first semi-final in this competition. And there's another one who's on a yellow card as well. Here's Alves. Busquets. Now Xavi. Stankovic uh, straight away going in to try and unsettle Xavi to do the job that uh, Mourinho has detailed him to do. Here's Messi. He's got uh, Zanetti, his Argentine international colleague, to shake off. It's another Argentine, Cambiasso, who breaks it up, though. Eto losing out to Pedro. Defended by Maicon, who is uh, booking away from 
missing the second leg and will be relieved if the referee doesn't produce one here. Well, he knows that. That's why the innocent look. He just upends him. He just sees flicks a leg up there. Knows exactly what he's doing, Mike. On. It's quite fortunate to get away with that. I have to say. He won't get away with another. Now this is a goal. Good bit of control. It was slightly behind him. Watch away. Drags it forward. And then the deftest of touches past Victor Valdez. It's a guy who's used to scoring, he didn't panic, he didn't thrash it. A chance here now for good delivery. This one's in towards Ibrahimovic. That well, up. Two Barcelona players have gone flying in the penalty area. Well, the accusing finger's been pointed. You watch the bottom of the screen there, just watch it. There you go. <laughs> ah, they know how to do it, don't they? Is that a couple of Argentinians here doing that? Samuel, who uh, took out Cater and uh, Busquets. <laughs> like a little bit of help from Cambiasso, so they know what they're doing. There's Melito trying to brush aside Puyol. Here's Mike on. Away by Maxwell. Cambiasso. Jose Mourinho, who was a, a couple of months short of his second birthday when Inter last won the European Cup. Kicked away by Maxwell, the former Inter player who had the assist for the first half goal from Pedro. Busquets, having won the free kick, takes it rapidly. And invites pressure on himself from Cambiasso and from Maicon. Schneider was there as well. That's a little nibble, but you know, after that, I think Cambiasso wins a pretty good tackle there. He's a little unlucky, and he's overrun that. Chira Pique, and he's caught him there. Quite caught out because Cambiasso's through ball didn't come off. There's one on here, though, no, the flag's up against uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Well, Pique has been booked, I think. I said he'd just overrun the ball, and... Mota came and pinched it off him, and Gerard Piquet was at full stretch. I wonder whether the referee would regard that as reckless. That one there. Might be a little unlucky, as I've said. Mourinho sides know how to make the most of that, and that's very, very close. But we've seen enough from Barca already since they've gone 2-1 down to suggest that this is this game tonight never made the tie. This game tonight is far from over. They'll play the final half hour of this first leg with both Puyol and Pique on a yellow card. Nito watches from the bench. Abidal is set to come on. He's had a half hour run out, having had a brief run out in the second leg against Arsenal, only for his recent groin problem to reoccur. showing plenty of adventure once again but he couldn't work it through Puyol and PK. well won back though by Thiago Motta crossed by Eto'o, Schneider's there again, Melito! and the defending European champions are really rocking now and no one deserves a goal more than Diego Melito well they've just been Barcelona Barcelona I mean because Diego Motta, I think it was on the edge of the box wins a brilliant tackle and it just stemmed from there. It's an awful header from Schneiders. He's going for goal and completely misheads it. But if anyone's deserved the goal, I've mentioned him, I thought he's been great as a front runner on his own, Diego Melito. He's deserved that simple one. They look round at the linesman, they're looking for offside and wondering what's happening. But the simple fact of the matter is the 3-1 down, that's the ball that's won. Now just watch Melito, is he off? Ooh, I tell you what, I think he just might be, Rob. I think he just might be. This is a really poor header. I think he's ahead of play. He looks round, he knows himself. Not quite as far ahead of play as Miroslav Klose was, mind you. And his goal was given for Bayern Munich in one of the games. 
But it's little things like that, Rob. Not just goals, but little bits of luck that sometimes change a tie. And it's amazing how Mourinho often has them. Well, this is how Barcelona react. They were planning to make the change anyway, of course, to be fair. Abidal coming on, Ibrahimovic coming off. Well. What a turnaround in this game. Amazing. But full marks, I mean top marks to enter. The players have been, well, I was very impressed at Stamford Bridge. I've been more impressed tonight. Because in honesty, you know, Barca are a better team. Penny for Gabriel Melito's thoughts. He's just seen his uh, brother score to put uh, Barcelona 3-1 down, and he's probably going to have to face him in the second leg with Priol suspended. On by Melito again and away by PK. It's funny, I was just saying to you before the game that, you know, I, I don't know whether everyone's getting carried away with how well Barca played against Arsenal, but, it, you know, I, th I had a funny feeling this would be a much tougher task. I had no idea 3-1 was in the offing, I have to say that. But I knew that Milan would, Inter, sorry, would make it much, much tougher for the little magician on the ball now, Messi and Xavi, the two, I think, main players to influence the game and dictate it in the way they did against Arsenal. Now, it's a lovely ball in, and, you know, Wesley Schneiders will be thinking, why haven't I scored? But he looks round immediately. And I think he had a horrible feeling. Diego Melito that that flag was going to be up and he was going to be denied again. Yes, it was his instinctive reaction, wasn't it? He looked straight to the linesman before he celebrated. Well, well, well. The master tactician coming out on top against the on-field magician. Well, Eric Abidal, I think, looking at this, has got the left back. Maxwell won up the pitch ahead of him. Alves with a cross, away by Maicon, but straight to Pedro. Here's Maxwell. Abidal has got forward here, and it flashed across invitingly in front of Keita. Oh, that's not a bad ball. Not a bad ball at all. Yeah, just a little bit back on the heels. You don't see that often about Barca. Front men in the box. You only really see though Keita. Looking to make anything of this. But they will be in absolutely no hurry. I can't think why now Inter would be in a rush to do anything, apart from run this clock down as much as they can. Well, as well as being a charismatic character, he is meticulous, Mourinho. And the opportunity seems to open up again there for uh, Dejan Stankovic. see again there how tight that is really really tight well it's a measure of Inter's achievement here it's the first time this season that Barcelona have conceded three goals will it end with three Alves, Xavi, away by Michael. He's always given it the other way. Little push he's given against Lucio. Oh no, he did give it the other <laughs> way, did he? So it looks like he's changed his mind. <laughs> for the handball then in the end. I well, was given it for that, I thought. And then as it bounces up, it's Pedro's arm. Change of mind. So it's now Pedro, Messi, Maxwell at the top end of the pitch. Apart from Messi, you think Pedro, young and experienced, Maxwell, not quite sure his credentials as a front runner. He's been used there in uh, some games by Pep Guardiola, although he has uh, more often than not filled in at fullback because Abidal has been yeah, absent for a long right. time. Well, he has Bojan, he has Thierry Henry. As uh, front man options or that kind of area they can play from the left, either of those. But he'll believe in these players, Pep Guardiola, that's the one thing. He believe that they'll, they, they're capable of creating another two or three chances in, the ma in this match, at least in the last quarter of it. And he'll be hoping that his team can take one. 
This form of defence is attack, their usual philosophy. Free kick against Thiago Motta, the former Barcelona player. Here's Chabi. Back by Busquets to Piquet. Here's Keita. Alves. Struck by Pedro against Zanetti, almost broke for Wesley Schneider. Play on. Here's Lucio. Eto thought he got away from Keita, but it's going to be a, a booking for him. Strange night for Barca, not used to this, as you say, first team to score three against them this season in the 53rd game in all competitions. And they'll be thinking, what's going on here? We've taken the lead in the game and now we're three down, three one down. Well, you say it's no excuse, the, uh, the travel plans that Barcelona had. No. I wonder if Pep Guardiola will use that, whether he'll. Uh, try and insist afterwards that Inter should travel by road for the second leg. Well, Inter will have to, if things don't get any better. Simple as that, Rob, they might just be doing that. No, going to CSK in Moscow then, yeah, I'll give you that, that they might be an excuse, but... No, well, 650, 700 miles, something like that? No. Vidal. Thought he kept it in, but he hadn't. All credit to Mykon, who uh, could have been held responsible for the uh, Barcelona goal, but he has played his part in bringing Inter back into this contest. So a concern. Lot of from Diego Melito, I'm not surprised, as I say. I, I've been really impressed with him, what, at 30, 30 years of age. And I think that, you know, his, his ability and his willingness to run the line and be the focal point of the attacks and occupy defenders. I think he's deserved his little bit of luck with his goals concerned. Change is going to be made. So Balotelli might be the player to come on, the player with whom uh, Mourinho has recently had to mend fences. Here's Abidal looking to keep it in, and he has. Away by Zanetti. Now Stankovic. The layoff by Milito this time. Schneider has Stankovic and Milito to his right. Here's Thiago Motta. So uh, Inter will at last have an Italian in their ranks with uh, Balotelli's arrival. Who's been a source of real frustration to uh, Jose Mourinho? But uh, this is my concern, isn't it? Looks good. I mean, I, we're all following the ball there. There's some concern there. Obviously, that last attack, something's going on. Well, he's just been caught accidentally. Here we go. Mike slides in. Oh, he heads goes flying forward. I don't know whether that camera that was sticking out there didn't. Oh no, it's just in the ground there. Sure. Well, hopefully nothing too serious. An awful lot of medical men around them. Well, some concern amongst those uh, Inter fans who are focusing on the pitch, but uh, amongst others, a, a mood maybe of disbelief at a 3-1 lead over Barcelona at this stage. I would guess disbelief from both sets of fans. Uh, a nasty blow, obviously, that uh, Mykon took. Well, they might have to re-change his thinking now. Change his thinking. So he used uh, one substitute, of course. He looks very groggy, doesn't yeah. he? Well, as always, that, Kian, you always worry about people when they get away. 
get a knock with a swallow of their tongue. That must have been a concern. You can see he's holding the jaw there as he comes in. My god, Ooh, he just gets a it's the shoulder of Messi, almost a nutter cut. You know, to throw someone as big and as powerful as Mike on, you know, sometimes hitting the point of the jaw there and really affect you. Well, Christian Kivu, who himself had a real uh, worry with uh, injury this season, as you can see from the uh, head guard he's putting on, he, he fractured his skull at uh, Kiovo back in January. He was expected to miss the rest of the season. But he's going to come on here for Mike on is the latest uh, cause of concern to that into defense Stankovic at the moment is just filling in as Barca press here this is Chavi and they want to get him on sooner rather than later it's tough enough playing against Barca we're living <laughs> well you see the what a mess have made of his mouth that shoulder is just I think might have bit down on his tongue anything like that smashed a couple of teeth it's made a mess of his of his mouth the injury that uh, Kibu himself suffered, hence the uh, Petacek style head guard, which he now sports. Had been expected to uh, miss the rest of the season when he got that injury. Did miss the game at the weekend because of uh, suspension anyway, the Romanian. Yeah, as Zanetti, as you can see, he's just dropped into right back. And they expected that. Kibu just play left back. The good thing about Zanetti, isn't he? He's so flexible, yeah, he can absolutely. play midfield, can play either side. Well, what have we got? Just over 15 minutes away from I think would be a sensational result that really would make Europe sit up and take notice. Melito. He's away again. See, that's what I mean about he might just struggle with cramp a little bit, Diego Melito, but that was an example of what I mean. Well, we played that ball off and then he was prepared to go again and get in. Now, unlike the Premier League, European games, people do look to put the ball out, even if a player's only got cramp. And sometimes when it's a, you know, a bit of a nuisance, it's obviously nothing seriously wrong with Diego Malito, we know that. And it's not Barca's fault he's got cramp. So Melito's exit means Balotelli's moment has arrived. And this is Diego Melito's moment. Squandered a couple of very good chances first half. A simple header. Generous applause, and so it should be. They are brought in this season from Genoa, and he's done magnificently. That was his 24th goal of the season as part of this reconstructed inter-team to try and advance further in the Champions League, which they have done already on last year when they were knocked out in the first knockout round. Is he made peace with Balotelli then? <laughs> I think yeah, he, they have uh, built bridges, but uh, it's been a, a somewhat fractious relationship between the manager and the 19-year-old under-21 international. Their disputes have been frequent. He was left out of six squads recently. And uh, Mourinho does seem to have this belief that uh, Balotelli, while a good attacking prospect, doesn't necessarily defend as well as he might, but he's got in a useful tackle there straight away. Yeah, well, he's going to play right side. Samuel Eto will play down the middle. That was Stankovic looking to release uh, Eto. He's off side. Middle. Just off side. But they do risk that time and time again. Part of their game, obviously, when they put pressure high up the pitch, they end up getting caught. Look how close that is. They get caught very high up the pitch at times. Barcelona. Maxwell, Xavi, it's Messi. Well, they need a bit of magic from the magic man. He really has been on the periphery of this game. No doubt about that. 40 goals this season is a sign of Messi's consistency. But he had a, a quiet game at the weekend against Espanyol, and Inter have managed to uh, stifle him similarly this evening. Balotelli looks to help it on. Eto may have been offside anyway. Here's Pique. Busquets. Now Keita. 
This is Xavi. Looking to wriggle away from Cambiasso, it's Pedro! It's a good block, really good block from Samuel. Alves looking to find Maxwell on the far side. Oh, that's Xavi for you. A wonderful little through ball there to Pedro, but super, super block, you're right. From Walter Samuel. Here's Xavi. Now Keita. Busquets. PK. Xavi fouled by Thiago Motta, who suggests there was uh, more than an element of a dive in that. Yeah, he sucked him in beautifully there, Xavi. He really did. Invited the challenge. And then as it came, just poked the ball past. Took the tackle. We'll have the free kick, he says. And they've got plenty of options here. Messi will obviously fancy it. It's been a frustrating night for him, as I've said. Very little in the game. But this is a wonderful opportunity for him. Left foot, it would suit. And for a player sprinkled with stardust, is this Messi's chance to glitter? It is Lionel Messi! And Julio Cesar meets the challenge. But away he goes again, Messi. Bounces up from one disappointment. Alves. Here's Busquets. Pique has stayed forward here for Barcelona. This is Messi. Maxwell. Keita tried to work it through to Pique. Couldn't take it on the turn. Well, they're just trying to work a, a shooting angle, Barca. This is big, big pressure that Inter under at the moment. Pedro now looking for a way through. It's threading it through the eye of a needle time, and Lucio clears away that Abidal cross. A little example we're finding here, I think, of the pressure they might be facing in eight days' time, time and time again. Here's Chabi. Now Gerard Piquet. Back by Pedro, this is Keita, and he goes for it. And this is the free kick. Gets it up and over and down, but you know, Julio Cesar always had it covered. Never quite had enough pace on it. Maxwell, Abidal. Sanetti keeping the pressure up after a casual play by the uh, French fullback. Balotelli, now Zanetti. Just gets it asked the question earlier if it had gone out, and by the time it does, it's an inter throw. Great throw. Javier Zanetti, absolutely top. 36 years of age. You never guess it. Great energy levels, here we are late in this game. He's right up alongside what the 19-year-old Balotelli up there helping him out high up the pitch. He might have been excused for just saying I'll have a rest at the halfway line, but no. It's not why he's played till he's 36 by having rests. His contract's up in the summer, but I don't think there's much doubt to be offered a new one. Well, you really do feel that this tie right now is on a knife edge. It really is, and one goal, either way, either way. Schneider's kick, Balotelli's header, but the referee had blown. Might well decide it. Should Barca get it? 3-2, going to Camp Nou, they'd fancy it. If Inter got it, 4-1, beyond their wildest dreams, could they protect a three-goal advantage in his home ground? He'd fancy it, wouldn't he? Jose Mourinho has uh, only once prevailed in a Champions League semi-final, and that was in his Porto days, with a victory in Spain against Deportivo La Coruña, but it was nil-nil from the first leg in that particular one. It's a foul by Stankovic, and he's going to get a booking that rules him out of the second leg of the semi-final. Well, it did look from behind, and that's where the referee was looking from, as if he jumped in a little. 
Dejan Stankovic. Yeah, see that? Just jumped a little into the tackle. Here's Messi. Came off the back of Zanetti, but uh, Lucio with time to clear. Here's Busquets. Now Pedro. Here's Xavi. Messi just waiting at the edge of the area. Piquet. Held back by Maxwell, it's Gerard Piquet! That would come down for him. Just would not sit for him. Really promising, but he was uh, beaten by the bounce. Here's Alves. Trying to get away from That's Snyder. Oh, what's he going to do? It looked from here like Snyder's just had a little dig at him from behind. Now, is he going to book Danny Alves? Well, well, for well. For diving. He is, you know. <sighs> and oh, is it? Well, he can't. He's laughing, isn't he? I'd quite like to see that one again. I have to say. Rob, my first reaction was Schneider's went in at the back of them, having lost this tackle there. And he's trying to pull out, but he's made contact. I think he's made contact with Danny Alves. There you go, across the back of his legs. And immediately, you can always tell when Schneider's goes, no, 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 no. That's guilt written all over his face. Well, again, those little things that influence semi-finals, again, this decision has gone not his way, but Jose's way. I have a few things to uh, complain about Guardiola. The itinerary, that uh, booking and what should have been a penalty, and the uh, Melito goal, which uh, they will feel was offside, probably was offside. And here is Schneider. Oh, got away from him. Oh, look at Balotelli. Furious. Well, it's not often Wesley Schneider can be accused of having a bad first touch. Maybe a little tiredness. Maybe. What are we? Last six or seven minutes of this match. Here's Busquets. Now Lionel Messi. Alves taking on Christian Kivu. Well, you can see how. Barcelona are pushing and pushing and pushing. No thought of them sitting back now. Piquet has slipped it through. It's uh, Maxwell who's brought it along the line to Daniel Alves. Nearing header reaches Schneider. Piquet in. Piquet keeps uh, gambling now on going forward as they look for this goal to enliven the tie and to give them greater hope in the second leg well as i say i still think at 3-1 this is right in the balance either way that's why the next five minutes i think for either of these teams is so so important they see unable to find a way around wesley schneider the first time here's Seydou Keita, struck against esteban cambiasso Barcelona will hope to give themselves hope in the corner. Well, this is the one here. That one there just dropped onto his left foot. Chest it down and uh, he didn't want it to, but it did. But we'll have to mark a little bit better here. Busquets got a free header last corner. Alatelli deals with that one. Stankovic goes up for it as well. It's broken to PK. And Lucio gets himself in the way. Oh, look at him and the goalkeeper there. Just go chest to chest, that's how important that is. I guess they were just saying between them, we've kept it out. Big, big block that. Another corner that they didn't defend very well. Chavi's corner pulled a little wider that time, and that was to Lucio's benefit. He got good distance on that header clear, with which he's found Samuel Eto, but that's short for Schneider. It's Pedro. Cambiasso and Stankovic. A real desire to get that away from him, which they do. But it cannons off uh, Balotelli to Abidal. Here's Keita. Barcelona just keep pressing, keep persevering.
Xavi. Looking, looking, look at him. Indicate who wants it, who's coming to show. Look at the frustration in little Xavi. You do not see that very often from him. Here he is again now, Xavi. Trying to prod it through to Messi. And Cambiasso gets it away. Schneider just lost his footing. Oh, we can't get hold of the ball into. Here's Aldez. Pedro trying to follow it in, but away by Javier Zanetti. It's a good lead that they've got, but it's a tense final few minutes they're in for. PK. Pedro. Enter with the cross, which Alves hoping to uh, follow in. Schneider took control. And away by Christian Kibu. Well, I reckon that was a downfall of Roberto Mancini, don't they? Into that he couldn't get close to winning this competition. Not a very good record in it. Three titles back to back may have been good enough domestically, it wasn't good enough for the club. This is where they wanted this inter side to be in. Well, Mourinho's taking them there. Can he take them one step further? Keita. Pulled across for PK, use of the arm was it? Doesn't matter anyway as it's uh, cleared. Well, got flattened, I have to say. Now, it did look like he might have controlled it with his arm, but no, no whistle went. But it then looked from there as if he got flattened. But you'd think this was the last two or three minutes of the tie, Rob, the way Barca are going at this. Got the centre back and centre forward. In PK, they have a man who's already scored against Inter this season. As Jose Mourinho will well remember. He learns his lessons well, doesn't he? He, like uh, Mancini, couldn't get them beyond the first knockout round last year. Different story this year, though. This is this chance when he takes it round the goalkeeper and then Lucio gets back in there to block it. Look at him. Couldn't quite sit for him again. When he did try and get it, big centre-half was up for it. Well, he's learned from his experiences uh, last year, Mourinho. He's reconstructed his team. They're in a similar situation last year to the one they faced this year in facing up to Messi when they were up against uh, Ronaldo last year when they drew the first leg, but uh, Ronaldo scored and was victorious in the second leg, much earlier in the competition than this for Manchester United. This will be a huge fillip for them if they can hold on to this scoreline. And Balotelli has Stankovic breaking ahead and a better ball then, and they could have been in for a fourth. That's the frustration with Balotelli, although Mourinho trying to encourage his man. Yeah. Just keep him on side. Why would you not want to encourage him now? You're 3 1 up against Barca, having gone a goal down. It's been a magnificent, res magnificent response, and what have they got? Four minutes of stoppage time to see out. No, they won't be celebrating too much after this, Rob. If it stays like this, no, we're not sure it'll stay like this. It, uh, you know, it'll be a marvellous night for everyone, everyone around this club. Always a big game for Mourinho when he faces Barcelona. Where he worked with uh, Bobby Robson, where he learned so much of his uh, skills in preparation and defensive organisation from Louis van Gaal, who is, of course, a, a potential final opponent for mm. him. <laughs> Some intriguing plots to come in this Champions League campaign. Not more so than in stoppage time here, because Barcelona keep knocking at the door, and with the talent at their disposal you can't write them off especially this man Lionel Messi Alves with the ball across PK is forward yet again and they go for the spectacular it was worth the attempt but uh, Julio Cesar up to the attempt from Pedro oh, what a good effort as well you can just imagine this goes anywhere but straight at Julio Cesar then he's got a problem good effort good technique Balotelli! It's a lot wider than it looked, isn't it? 
<laughs> he just seems to have a little chip at the fans and everything now, isn't he? I think the fans criticising him for hitting it. Well, he, as well as not being too popular with Mourinho, he doesn't necessarily make himself overly popular with the fans by his declared allegiance is to AC Milan. No, that don't help when you play for Inter. No. <laughs> but they will love him if he uh, gets a fourth goal, although he's lost, lost possession rather cheaply there. Maxwell, Balotelli blocking the initial ball. In by Chabby. Free kick given. It's Keita. Now oh, what a night! What a night! The first goal goes in. You think, wow, huge business as usual for his team. They'll just go on and win this, probably two 0 Take a lead to the home leg. But Inter players had other ideas. Fantastic response at the, from the first half, and then what a great start to the second. They really did come out the traps in the second half. And might easily have scored before they did get their goal. OK, gift to the third. Thought he was offside. And Danny Alves might have had a penalty. And, you know, things need to go your way in semi-finals. And if they don't, this is what happens. Even little things like that, you know, free kicks, they're all going into his way at the moment. And you need that in a semi-final. Don't care how talented you are. And he has got a talented side. You still need the rub of the green, as they say. Well, they're coming under pressure in the domestic league, but they've got a second leg in this one to uh, try and retrieve it. I think they might forgive him. Coming second in the Italian league in Serie A. Should he deliver a Champions League final spot, eh? Well, that's what he was uh, employed to do, as you mentioned earlier. On by Stankovic. Eto looking to get in, Balotelli's there with him. Here's Alves. It's a special result for the special one. Barcelona, the defending European champions, under real pressure after this 3-1 defeat in Milan to Inter. On a night that started so well for them with Pedro's goal, but a wonderful response. Schneider, Maicon, and a really deserved goal from Milito, making it into three, Barcelona won, and real pressure on Barcelona at the new Camp for the second leg.